Hello, and welcome to the Poison Paint Factory. My factory designated name is Poison226. Nice to meet you. We're painting Dooku. So this is the model. As you can see, there's been um, some gaps that we needed to fill in. It's not a problem. Looks worse until you paint it. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know that I always prime my minis white. As you can see, I'm priming this mini black because I'm a liar and you can't stop me. My point is that because we built the model in one piece, it's a lot harder to get to the cape section. Now, I've done a couple of models like this before and it's been a nightmare getting to the, the back side of the model. So what I've learned is if you prime it black and you miss a bit inside the cape that's hard to reach, no one notices because it's just shadow. See, look, isn't that great? It might cause me some problems later down the line, but hey, we're at this point. The biggest area on this model is the cape, so I decided to paint it with the red leather. It's about right for the mid-tone for the cape. I'm quite happy with this. I watered it down really thin, which took many layers to get an opaque covering, but it was worth it. It's still smooth, it's nice. Um, and I'm so used to painting on a white model now that Painting on a black model is a nightmare. <laughs> it's definitely not helping the um, painting count, getting that reduced down and getting out of this factory anyway. Look at that, smooth, it looks nice. Moving on. If you've watched the films or you look at pictures of Dooku, it's not fully black, the um, shirt that he's wearing. So this off black, grey colour is, is absolutely ideal. I'd highly recommend it. And the coverage is really nice as well over black. And I noticed that his trousers are slightly different colour, so I painted them with this grey because it's got more of a browny tone to it instead of the bluey grey. And we're going with a light skin tone here because the Count's skin's paper thin. Look at that. It took so many layers over that black to get it covered, but it was worth it. We also played Find the Ear. That was fun. What's hair, what's ear? No one knows. The Count's got white hair, so I started with this graphite grey, which is going to be the darkest part of it. Hey look, I did his eyes. Isn't that good? They're very different shapes, but I think his eyes are actually a different shape on this sculpt, so I don't think it really matters. We'll find out when we put the pupils in. Oh god, what have I done? It's alright, we can tidy that up. Fix it in post. Doesn't look too derpy though, that's nice. Uh, so he's got really raised cheekbones, so Obviously, put a little bit of shadow on them cheeks. This brown's a little bit too dark, um, but I'll show you how I fix that in a second. So mix a little bit of the skin tone and this brown, and you can just water it down to like a, a very thin consistency. Just put that under the brown, 
uh, where the shadow is, and it'll just settle it down a little bit. It won't be quite as stark. Back to the hair, we're just going to go and pick out some of the hairs. And then brighten up the skin again. Fixing my mistakes, let's say. The little belt I wanted to be a different colour to the cape, so I went with a warmer tone. And again, going back to the hair, we're just going to hit some highlights and keep it a bit darker towards the back, especially towards the lower bit. But you can see I've left quite a lot of the other colours showing. Don't overdo it, but you do want it to look white in the end. Here we go, we're starting to brighten it real high. Obviously with his beard it has got some texture sculpted in, but if you just tap it and just put little dots, no one notices that it's so fine. And the final highlight of white. There you go, look, his moustache, around his chin, and around where his forehead is. It really makes a difference. My favourite part, black lining. So anywhere there'd be a shadow, hit some black. Um, as you can see, I've got the creases there and under the sleeve. It's really important to make sure that it's really watered down. You could use an ink for that, but I chose to use a pure black. Uh, and I went back to the cape and darkened down with a mixture of red leather and the uh, coal black. Again, you can see how watered down this is. Um, you can also see I did the texture base. So this was the second day that I'd been painting this model. Uh, I wanted the textured paint to dry before I started messing around again with him. But look, it's just darkened down them creases and recesses. It's made life a lot easier for us. Mix about 50-50 the brown leather and red leather, and this is what you get. Just get all of the raised edges. It looks pretty good. Well done, me. I've highlighted where the uh, brown belt is, and I've highlighted, again, all of the raised bits on the cape. Mix a bit of, of the next colour up and you get that. And I've started highlighting the chest piece and his boots. Anytime I show two colours it's pretty much a 50-50 mix. And this is why I did the base the day before, so I could dry brush orange over it because I weren't happy that the actual texture paint was the right colour for, for the Genosis Desert. So this orange kind of brings it up a little bit and I've, I've got some on his boots and I've got some on his cape to bring the model into contact with the base. Because there's nothing worse than painting a wonderful base and a wonderful model and them not looking connected. This was just to darken it down, so this is the first time I've used a, an actual ink for a long time, but it's just to bring all the colours together. And now onto the lightsaber, the bit you've been waiting for. It's now not a poo stick, it's a red stick. I'm actually surprised how many layers it took to make this a, a really nice bright red. No shade on the on the actual paint range. Uh, it was just because I worked, I, like always, I watered it down way too much. This is why I'm never going to get out of this place. Dry brush in, brighten it back up. Looks a little bit more orange on the base now. I'm quite happy with that, I think it's about right. And then paint the rim brown leather. I didn't want it to look orange, so I thought it's a good mid-range. It's not black, it's not brown, it's, it's all right. Lightsaber, just, just hit the bits that aren't around his hand, or the bit under his sleeve can be a bit darker. There's no real magic to it. What I figured out, looking at lightsaber images and looking at the films, I really wanted it to have 
like an internal glow by painting it at an angle, choosing what angle you're gonna photograph the mini, and you just run the lighter color down the side of your brush, down about the middle of the lightsaber. And when you add the next step where it's pure white, obviously water down a little bit, you don't want it too thick but you water down the white a little bit and do the same again. Being careful just to run it down the middle of that highlighted red, then it starts to look like it's glowing. What I did do after this, which I didn't film, was I watered down the highlight color red again, watered it down to a very, very thin ink consistency, and then just put that over the white, just so that it gave it, um, it brought it all together and I just on a whim decided to do a little bit of OSL from the lightsaber. So you can see that there's a bit of red on the inside of his cape and down his leg and a little bit on his hand and his, uh, the cuff of his sleeve. I'm really happy with him. I think he looks as close as I can get him to his film counterpart. I'm a big fan of Christopher Lee, as you may have noticed if you watched the last video I did about Count Dooku. But this was something really special. I took a lot of time over this model. Let's see how the next model goes. And so, with all that said, thank you for your time. I wish you a good day and many more besides. Yours, Forever in Horror, 226.